Uh, colorectal cancer presents with a number of symptoms, um, starting off with um, no symptoms at all. Uh, there are a significant proportion of patients who are asymptomatic, uh, and this is the reason for establishing the National Bowel Cancer Screening Program for which patients are encouraged to participate. Um, the symptomatic group will have different symptoms depending upon where in the bowel the cancer is found. So for example, if you have a right-sided colonic cancer, the symptoms you tend to get are an iron deficiency anemia, so malaise, lethargy, weight loss, anorexia, and so on. If the cancer is in the left colon or the rectum, the symptoms are slightly different. They are loose stools, uh, blood within the motion, and tenesmus. Well, I think this is the challenge that we all face as uh, clinicians dealing with colorectal cancer in that the symptoms of benign disease and the symptoms of colorectal cancer can often be um, indistinguishable. And what I can say is that patients presenting with chronic abdominal pain, uh, bloating and um, constipation um, are very unlikely to harbour significant pathology. But patients with diarrhoea, blood in the motions, uh, they're much more high risk symptoms as is an iron deficiency anemia. So it is a challenge to separate benign symptoms from malignant ones. I think that depends upon um, the level of anxiety the GP has about their patient harbouring a malignancy. Um, if there is significant anxiety about this, then they need to be investigated along the two-week wait pathway uh, with endoscopy or appropriate diagnostics. If we are just investigating the patient to rule out a cancer, uh, then that's perfectly reasonable as well, and then the benign symptoms can be dealt with uh, you know, in their own merits. If the patient fulfills the criteria for a two-week wait, then that's how we'd like to receive the referral. Um, if the GP still has anxieties about there being a cancer, but the patient doesn't exactly fulfill the criteria for the two-week wait, then we'd still like to see those patients urgently, and they should be referred uh, in the usual way um, as an urgent referral. Any of their acute trusts that deal with colorectal cancer, um, each trust will have a colorectal nurse specialist who carries a mobile phone. Um, any of the colorectal surgeons would be happy to accept phone calls um, from GPs about advice regarding patients with colorectal cancer. And actually at the North Middlesex Hospital, we have a dedicated mobile phone carried by the consultants specifically for GPs to ring with any advice or help about colorectal cancer patients. Uh, in addition to this, if they just want advice about treatments available for patients, for example, then they might contact London Cancer Direct for information about that. Early diagnosis of colorectal cancer is crucial um, simply because the outcome is so different. So to put it in perspective for you, a Duke's A cancer, an early cancer, has a 95% five-year survival. It's curable whereas a Duke's D cancer, where patients present with liver or lung metastases, has a five-year survival of 5% and a one-year survival that isn't much better. So there's a huge difference between um, curability in the early stages and incurability um, and high mortality in the late stages.